back to creating a family budget on Microsoft Excel. We left off last time with completing the comprehensive expense, expense tracker and completing the formulas up here in the uh, summary bars. I'm now going to explain to you this box right here, the debt summary. We're going to create the debt tracker page. If you look back at the completed page that we started at, this it doesn't look like it's that much information, but really where this comes from is this. This is the comprehensive debt tracker. You can title it whatever you want. I, I called it burning off the debt. It takes a lot of work, it takes a lot of time, but ultimately you're healthier in the end because of it. So this is what our conclusion is going to be, and I'm going to show you how to make it. <clears throat> Go to your debt tracker page, highlight bars A through L, merge and center. This family, the Johnsons, have three sources of debt. They have student loans, they have a mortgage, and they have a car loan. We're going to work on those one at a time. First thing we need to do is, is merge cells A and B and C and D. That's going to create these bars. So in this one, you title what your debt is and then this one this box is going to be your accounting box that's where the money figure is going to be I'm just gonna highlight these boxes and um, outline them now I'm gonna take these two boxes and merge those together take those two boxes merge those together take these two boxes merge those together I'm gonna leave these two separate and I'll show you why in a minute here we're gonna keep track of what we've paid back if it wraps like, or if it doesn't wrap, if it goes off, come down to Format, Alignment, Wrap Text. Okay, just like that. This will be a figure, a, money, a monetary figure. So you change that to Accounting, we'll come back to that. This right here will be the amount of loan that you took in the first place. This will be a monetary figure. And then this box right here is where we're going to put the percent interest rate of the loan taken. In this case, it's 6.5% uh, interest rate. If you don't want that extra zero there, you can come up here and click that and it'll get rid of it. So we said with the student loan that it was a $15,000 loan. Center that. Fifteen thousand dollar debt. This is how much of the loan they took out in the first place. Now up here, this the figure that you see here. This is going to be the balance of what the initial loan was minus the balance that you've paid. So we're going to leave that open right now. Down here, this is where, as you can see here, this is where we're going to keep track of. We're going to use these four rows down, or these four columns down here, these two rows, to keep track of how much we've paid currently and how much we've paid in the past up till this point. So rows six and seven will be the current year. Well, let's say they took out the loan last year. Then this current year, the next current year, or the next year, and then the year after that. These are the years that they plan on. They plan on having this loan, the student loan, paid off in four years. And in order to do that, with a $15,000 debt at 6.5% interest, it's calculated at $356 a month. This will be a, this, these boxes right here will all be monetary. There it is. But we're going to highlight these boxes, or rather separate these boxes, because this is all going to be past tense. So we're going to use the sepia tone. And if you want to fill in those boxes like that, you can do that as well. Enter zeros. And then down here you're going to enter date, payment, date, payment. You're going to have two columns. 
and you want to make at least a one payment a month for 12 months out of the year. So we need at least two columns of six rows. We're going to expand it to be 10 rows just in case. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm going to highlight those right there and I'm going to outline them just like that. I want two columns, so I'm going to highlight this column right here and give it a right border. Voila, it separates the two. I want those centered just like that. Now what we're going to do, and I'm also going to underline this to separate it from what's going to follow beneath it. So now at this point, we need to make sure that these boxes are monetary value. And these boxes, by the way, I'm highlighting separate boxes that are away from each other, like this, by holding down the control button. So I click and drag, let go of the click, hold down the control button, click and drag, let go. And I'm going to change those to short date, just like that. So now at this point, I can enter in zeros. So what's going to happen now is as the Johnsons pay off their debt to their student loan, they'll write in the date that they do it. So if we look back at February, they paid off loan on the student, or they paid off, put a payment on the student loan, 356 on the 7th. So they come here, oops, $356. We can also see, excuse me, we can also see that they paid off an additional $100 on the 27th. So we enter that in as well. And as they go out, go throughout the rest of the year of 2013, they will enter in those money, those monetary values here. Now, just for history's sake, they have already paid off um, eight hundred and fifty dollars to their debt so I'm just gonna enter that there but that figure comes from somewhere and I'm gonna show you where it comes from by using it in the current year of 2013 formatting sake I'm just gonna italicize those so as they go throughout the rest of the year they enter in the payments and the dates that they were made and then at the end of the year they're going to total them up and put them up here and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Okay, so here the Johnsons are at the end of 2013. They've been making payments zealously throughout the year and they've even added a couple extra payments here and here. So now it's the end of the year. We've entered, they've entered the year 2014, but instead of extending this box further to add additional dates, a more concise way to do that is to include the total here. So this box now equals, or rather, instead of doing that, escape, hit, use the auto sum. Click and drag, let go, hold down the control button, click and drag, and press enter. So now that was, so now that again, just like all the other boxes, anything you adjust in these boxes will automatically enter in there. So if, let's say they want to make another deposit at the last day of $51 that they got from grandma automatically updates there. You want to do this at the beginning of the year. Now it's 2014 for the Johnsons. Just off to the side they write down the total that they spent repaying their bill. This matches that. And then here, because now they're just going to delete the formula and copy it up there. Because now the reason you want to delete that formula is because now this box is going to equal the same formula. Auto sum here, control here, enter. But of course it's 2014, they haven't made any payments. Delete, 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 delete. All of the formatting is still here. These are still accounting boxes. These are still date boxes. Now as they continue throughout the year of 2014, the formula is already set up. So if they make a payment of 356, automatically enters it there throughout. Now, here comes some more formula 
to tell you how you're, how you're doing with your progress. This balance is going to equal, or excuse me, this box is going to equal that box, the payments of 2012, plus the payments of 2013, plus the payments of 2014, plus the payments of 2015. Another way you can do that is you click on it, auto sum those boxes and press enter. It equals the same thing. This box will now show you how much you've paid and now up here is a simple formula equals the original data or original loan minus the balance paid and voila this is how much money you have left on your debt. You'll do that with the other debts that you have, however many that you have, and I'm going to create them now. Okay, so I've created the additional two loan charts. They're formatted just the same as this, except obviously I've changed the colors a little bit, and I've formatted this box and this box special. And changes the colors again, it's all just formatting what makes it look nice for you. Now this record keeping system is actually a lot more important than it may seem originally, because not only is it keeping record, but it is also setting a goal for what you want to accomplish or what you need to accomplish. For example, this mortgage that they took out for $149,250 for their home is a 15-year mortgage. So guess what? They only have until 2025 to pay it off without getting into a lot more issues. So again, this is a lot more important than simply just, oh, well, how much have I paid in the past? Set up the same way, sum, all that. As they edit in, it goes there at the end of the year. They just paste the number in there manually, re-auto sum for this, for these boxes, and you keep track of it that way. Now, having these are already set up, this box balance paid is the sum total of all of these boxes together. Subtract, and this box is the total of this minus this. Same thing over here. Now, let me show you how to include this back onto your main page. This is going to be, this box is going to be a summary of what your debt situation currently is. So you don't have to switch pages to go all the way back. This will just show you. So if you look back at the original, the, there are the three loans or the three debts that they have. So you'll, we'll recreate that and then we have a, a way to keep track of them. So after having recreated this box, it's all a matter of introducing formulas again. This box, the, uh, the n money repaid on the mortgage is going to equal that right there. Really easy way to do that. Press equals, come over, click that box, press enter. It doesn't fit. Oh. This is an error you might run into. If you look up here in the formula, G4 and G5, that's what it's showing. Come over here, G4 and 5. It's trying to get the value from both boxes when they've been merged. There's only one box, and so it, it gets, becomes confused. All you have to do is note which box comes first in the alphabetical or numerical ascension. So 4 is before 5. So you come back here and you delete the latter enter the number, and there it is. It's probably, the same thing's probably gonna happen with the car. Equals, come over, enter. Same thing happened, I'm just gonna delete the last number, voila. And now, as those numbers change on this page, they will automatically update on this page. Now you may wonder, well, what's the big deal? Why don't I just do everything on this page? Well, for one, if you have multiple debts over 15 or 30 years of rec records, you can't fit it all onto one page. Remember, we want to be able to create this page so that you can print it out and keep a hard copy in a file system without them spanning large uh, horizontal pages. So what you'll be able to do when we get on to March, when, you wanna, when the Johnsons are finished with their February and they want to start their March, what they can do is they'll just be able to copy or click and drag and copy everything. Control C, A1, paste. Okay, and then remember, highlight all the columns, auto adjusts. 
and now this box has all the same formulas. You won't have to recreate the same formula. So you can just copy and paste as the months throughout goes as the months go throughout the year. And this is the one where it gets all of its information from. So that's why we want to create a a summary page that formula that draws on a formula calling from a different page. The remaining is going to be the exact same thing. Remaining on the mortgage is that that number right there. Press enter. Voila. Car, same thing. And then this percentage repaid is just kind of a feel good. It's not something you have to put in at all, but it it can be a really it can be a real boost when you're trying to figure out how much you've paid back and how much progress you've made. This box, you want to, it's going to be a percentage of how much you've paid. So this divided by that. So equals that divided by, oops, not, not that, divided by that, enter. But then obviously that gives the decimal, so you can come up here and just click percentage, voila. If you want to go out to more decimal points, you can do that, as many as you want. Same thing here, equals that divided by that enters that oops that one divided by that enter it's like both boxes just like that now you have a percentage you can say oh, okay I've paid back 21 percent of my mortgage again it's not necessary but it can be beneficial in at least giving you, helping you obtain a positive attitude, which when it comes to paying back bills, that can be a big deal, especially when you're paying back a mortgage of 149000 or 250000 or 400000 however much of a mortgage you've taken out and however long you plan on paying it. So that's it on how to create a debt tracking system. You can perpetuate these boxes as many as you need for your various debts. You just put more down there. If you ever want to print this page, or these pages, and you want to make sure they all fit on one page, just come up to File, go to Print, you'll change your portrait to Landscape, okay, and you'll notice that some of this goes off the edge a little bit. So you can come to Margins, and go to Narrow, that opened it up just a little bit. You can also, if you have the paper, you can use a larger paper, and that obviously makes it fit but if we're just using a regular letter paper on landscape. You can come to scaling and click on fit all columns on one page and it automatically will shrink it. Now obviously all the, as you can see all of the expenses are not on one page. That will carry over onto another page. So you can just scroll down and there's the rest of it. But you'll be able to print this now and it's all on one page. You don't have to worry about second and thirds and fourth pages carrying just that little bit of extra information that was on the right and having tried to order it, copy and paste it by hand, any of that kind of stuff. So this is why we've created it as small and concise as we can to allow for easy printability in a filing system, anything like that. So that's basically it on creating the, the budget system. Now I'm going in the next video I'm going to show you how to create a year-end summary page. It's a lot of formula. It can be very telling to show where your money is going how the money is being spent, and many other such data. It looks like this. Now don't be scared, I'll show you how to do it. Thanks for watching, see you again soon.